How's it going? Welcome back to Same Sam Kitchen. My name is Sam Lin. I'm just an ordinary home cook who's really passionate about sustainability and save money by making things at home. And hopefully by following along my YouTube journey, I can help you do the same in your own kitchen as well. This week, the recipe I am bringing to you guys is one of my new favorite recipe for snacks. The snacks that I eat literally throughout the week, sometimes on the weekend as well. Um, yeah, so this week we're going to be making hummus. Hummus is one of those things. Uh, it's super hearty, it's super versatile. Spread it on bread, um, chuck a few veggie sticks in it, and it's just so satisfying. It's consisted of just a few basic ingredients. Um, chickpea, water, olive oil if you like, um, some sort of acid, lemon or lime or if the citrus is super expensive, some vinegar will be a good substitution as well and then obviously just some salt to season it up. I'm trying to blend in some more of the personal finance side of thing that I'm personally really really passionate about and that really is the whole reason I started this channel by sharing with you guys what I cook in my, in my kitchen and then how much it's costing me or how much is saving me by making all these things at home. I started looking into that because of a lot of personal reasons um, that happened in 2020 and really got me looking at my budgeting and stuff. One of my biggest expenses is obviously food. So I started looking at ways to cut down my cost, how not to buy things, you know, how I can make things at home, make things from scratch and really, really made a really big difference. So let me know in the comment section below uh, what you think of the personal finance side of topic. I'm really keen to talk more about personal finance and really just combining budgeting food with personal finance and see how I can sort of marry the two things up. Both of these topics are something that I'm really, really passionate about and I'm really keen to share that with you guys um, going from budgeting and then maybe looking into the really, really basic uh, investment side of thing. Something that fits into Hummus topic is um, buy the dip. <laughs> buy the dip or not buy the dip. We're talking about two different, uh, two different scenarios here. Don't buy this dip from supermarket that costs you, I don't know, $5, $6. It costs literally a fraction to make at home. Um, but at the same time, when it comes to investing, buy the bloody dip when it's dipping dollar cost averaging and really just buy into the investment, buy into the stock that you're really into. So buy the dip or not buy the dip, I don't know, you tell me. Yes, without further ado, um, let's get cooking. To make hummus, we'll need a few very basic ingredients. To start off, the main ingredients of hummus is chickpeas. I've got some dry chickpeas here. Alternatively, you can use tin chickpeas, but what you're missing out on is being able to name your food. In all seriousness, Dry chickpeas is about half the price and by soaking our own chickpeas, we avoid producing wasted tins which in the best case scenario, I hope they get recycled properly instead of going to landfill. I usually just buy a whole kilo of chickpeas and hold them as a pantry item. A little storage hack for dry ingredients for you. I do buy yogurt and have it for breakfast for most mornings. The plastic container is a good size to store dry goods like chickpeas and beans. Rather than just throwing them out, find ways to reuse plastic containers like this will help out the environment. These containers are stackable and takes up way less space compared to cylinder containers, so highly highly recommended. Next thing, we'll need some garlic, some citrus, here I'm using a lemon, some water. I see some recipes say to use olive oil. I personally like hummus made with water. It's a lot lighter and a little bit lower in calorie too some salt to season and some tahini <laughs> sorry tahini i made this tahini at home as you can probably tell once i run out of this batch i will make a video on how to make tahini at home so stay tuned and that's all of the ingredients we need we'll put these aside and get started first thing we'll need is a container to soak the dry chickpeas i'm using a clear jar for some nice b-rolls if you're making this at home just grab whatever you have Chickpeas do expand a bit, so make sure that your container is at least double the volume of the chickpeas that you're soaking. I'm soaking 150 grams of dried chickpeas and adding about 400 grams of water to soak. Here's a nice time-lapse footage of my little chickpeas growing up. Why do I sound like a proud dad? Soak your chickpeas for at least a couple of hours, overnight if time allows. 
Fully soaked chickpeas takes less time to cook and will produce a smoother hummus. Drain your chickpeas. I'm saving the liquid to water my houseplants. They have some special power that will make your plants very happy. Next, grab a pot and we'll pour the drained chickpeas into the pot. If you're just using tin chickpeas here, one tin should give you about 250 grams of chickpeas. Add about 500 grams of water and put the pot on the stove to get cooking. Once the water is boiling, turn the heat down to simmer, put a lid on and we want to cook the chickpeas for about 30 minutes. While the chickpeas are cooking, we can prep the rest of the ingredients, which really is just garlic and lemon. Grab one clove of garlic, crush it real good. Crush it like you'd crush someone else's hopes and dreams. Cut the garlic into slices. Turn it into garlic mince. And we'll put it aside for now. After cooking for about 30 minutes, the chickpeas should be nice and tender. Grab a fork to test it out. You should be able to crush the chickpeas quite easily. Give it a taste. Best way to know your ingredients is by tasting it throughout cooking. Drain the water out of the pot. The water is known as aquafaba. I won't get into the details, but do some research. It's good stuff. Also, make sure to drop some chickpeas while draining the water out. It's the secret to make great hummus. There are recipes telling people to de-skin the chickpeas to produce a smoother hummus. I personally can't be, f can't be bothered, but you can do whatever you want. Next, we're going to cut up our lemon. Always give your citrus a roll on the board before cutting into it. It helps break down the cell walls and will give you more juice. Cut it in half. And next, we want to grab our jar and start putting things together. Garlic in. Juice half of the lemon and cooked chickpeas in. Next, we want to add about the same amount of water to chickpeas in weight. For me, it's about 300 grams of water. If you're using tin chickpeas, it'd be about 250 grams. Once all ingredients are in, you can start blending the hummus. Here, I'm using a stick blender. You can use a food processor, or a blender should work just fine too, if you go for a slightly thinner consistency. Halfway through, I realized that I forgot to add my tahini. I used up the rest of the jar, which is about 30 grams of tahini. Tahini is what gives hummus that richness and the unique nuttiness. Once the hummus is coming together, it becomes a smoother paste. Add a pinch of salt, around 3 to 4 grams. Continue blending so the salt is mixed through your hummus. Once the hummus is nice and smooth, grab a spoon and give it a taste. Adjust according to your palate. I'm pretty happy with how the flavour turned out, so I grabbed my tiny spatula and scraped off all of the delicious hummus off the stick blender and that's it, we've just made some hummus. Grab a container and pour your hummus in or leave it in a jar like me. It's good to stay in the fridge for at least one week. My favourite way to have hummus is dip it with veggies like carrots and celeries. It's pretty healthy, but at the same time, so satisfying. I've got some old carrots at home which are soft and bendy. Keep watching and I'm going to show you how to make them crunchy again. Cut the head off and as always, I've got my compost box. Cut one edge off and turn the carrot to the flat side so it won't wobble while cutting. Cut the carrot into half a centimeter thickness the long way and cut it into strips. Cut the carrot sticks into your container and we'll cover it with water. The water will rehydrate the carrot and give it back the crunchiness. I normally have a couple of carrots cut up this way, kept in water and in the fridge, so I always have snacks ready to go. A little life hack here is if you have healthy snacks that's ready to go conveniently, you'd be less likely to opt for the unhealthy snacks. Here are some carrots I prepared earlier. Listen to how crunchy they are. If you feel like being a bit of a fancy pants, here's a quick way to level up your hummus presentation. Grab a bowl or a plate, chuck in a couple of spoons of hummus. Turn the bowl or plate while you have your spoon in the hummus to create a little bit of terrain in there. 
drizzle in some extra virgin olive oil. Garnish with some paprika or cumin. I pinched some parsley from my pot plant so I can flex even more. And that's it, an Instagrammable plate of hummus. The cost breakdown is as below. 150 grams of dried chickpeas at $3 a kilo equals to 45 cent. One clove of garlic is about 2 cent. Half a lemon is about 30 cents. 30 grams of tahini at $6 a kilo is about 18 cent. The recipe yields is about 600 grams of hummus at 95 cent. One retail tub of hummus at 200 grams is sold for two to three dollars. Well, you can do the math. And there we have it. One of my favorite healthy snack, carrots or any veggie sticks really. Celery will work really well as well with um, homemade hummus. It's super easy to make. It travels really well as well. I bring this, apologies to my colleagues. I bring this to work all the time. Um, chuck the carrot stick in my reusable freezer bag have the hummus in here, really, um, just a couple of tablespoons, chuck it in here, that's your snack to kill your um, peckerishness. Super easy, super, super simple to make, and carrots, they hold really, really well in water, and then um, it actually rehydrates it and gives it the crunch back. Um, just listen to this. So good for you, super, super easy to make. Um, make a batch, share with your friends, or I think it holds pretty well in the freezer as well. So if you make too much, chuck in the freezer and then defrost it when you, when you need it. If I'm just working from home, seriously, I just got my container of carrots. I put the hummus in a separate container and really 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock when you're feeling a little bit hungry, um, just grab a few carrot stick or celery stick, whatever, and then that's your snack. Perfect. Well, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. I update recipe videos on a regular basis. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video.